Hello Future MDs, here's part 3 of our NMAT Biology Review for Practice Set 2019. Ito na yung last part ng ating Biology Rational. I'll put the link to part 1 and 2 on the description below. Tsaka ilalagay ko na rin yung links ng PDF reviewers na ginamit ko sa baba. I hope that you subscribe on this channel if you find value to the contents here. Also, feel free to share this with your friends na magtitake din ng NMAT. Okay, start na tayo. Number 41, which of the following events results to the shortening of sarcomeres in muscle fibrils? So, yung sagot dito is, yung dahilan nung shortening ng sarcomeres is letter B, conformational modifications of the tripomyosin troponin complex within the muscle fiber. Ayan, once the myosin binding sites are exposed and if sufficient ATP is present, myosin binds to actin to begin cross-bridge cycling. Then, the sarcomere shortens and the muscle contracts. Another rationale is, in the absence of calcium, this binding does not occur. So, the presence of free calcium is an important regulator of muscle contraction. Ayan, so, yung sa figure na to, myosin binding sites covered by tropomyosin. And then, yung troponin binds calcium ion. Ayan, mas okay siguro kung manood na lang kayo ng animation or YouTube video about the process of muscle contraction. Mas, mas madali niyong maintindihan. Number 42, a cerebellar lesion is suspected in a patient with history of traumatic brain injury. Which of the following tests could not initially verify this condition? Yung answer dito is Babinski reflex test. So itong mga to, Ipapakita ko na lang yung definitions nila and kung paano yung procedure nila. Ayan. So, you can read these definitions. Try to pause this video na lang and then read on your own so that you'll be able to understand. And ito naman yung sa rapidly alternating movement evaluation. And ito yung procedure niya. And ito na lang muna yung i-explain ko, yung Babinski reflex test. And it involves stroking the sole of the foot and assessing the response in the toes. So, uh, i-stroke niya yung tool sa ganitong direction. And then, pag positive, ganito yung magiging itsura ng foot. And then, pag negative, ganito yung magiging itsura ng foot. Babinski reflex is a marker for the health of the cortical spinal tract, which is a nerve channel sending information between the brain and the body and limbs. So, hindi siya sa cerebellum. And kung positive yung lumabas sa Babinski test, you may have an underlying nervous system or brain condition that's causing your reflexes to react abnormally. Number 43. Which part of the female reproductive gland is homologous to the structure of the male reproductive gland marked by the arrow in the diagram above? So, itong part na to. Ayan. Yung answer is letter B, skin's gland. So, yung skin's gland, this gland is responsible for the production of lubricating fluid in the vaginal canal. Ayan. Yun yung female counterpart, no? prostate gland. So, itong part na to is prostate gland. Yung function ng prostate gland, it secretes the prostate fluid in the semen. So, homologous sila kasi ito secretes the prostate fluid. Ito naman produces the lubricating fluid sa vaginal canal. And then, yung sa Bartholin's gland naman sa female, homologous siya dun sa bulbo-uretral glands in males. Yung fimbri naman sa female, yun yung small finger-like projections at the end of the fallopian tubes. Yung G-spot, an area within the vagina reported by many women to be sensitive. Number 44, which of the following reproductive hormones is correctly matched with its function? So yung correct answer is letter A, luteinizing hormone stimulation of sperm production. Okay, yung luteinizing hormone, siya yung responsible for ovulation or pag-produce ng egg cells and testosterone synthesis. Yung testosterone, importante siya for producing sperms. Ayan, and then yung estrogen naman, it maintains female secondary sexual characteristics. 
hindi siya yung nagtitikan ng uterine lining. Yung main hormone for that is yung progesterone. It promotes growth and maintenance of endometrium. Yung oxytocin naman, ito medyo nakakalito to, pero sinurch ko yung oxytocin is for the secretion of milk. Yan, it causes uterine to contract. Ito yung other function. And also, it makes the myoepithelial cells around the alveoli contract. Yung prolactin siya talaga yung hormone responsible for production of milk. Yung oxytocin kasi, siya yung nagkukos for the secretion ng milk. Ayan, it makes the myoepithelial cells around the alveoli contract. This makes the milk flow along and fill the ducts. Ayan, yung alveoli, yun yung hollow sac sa breast. Iba yun dun sa alveoli na nasa lungs. Instead of production of milk, dapat secretion of milk yung nandito. Number 45, which of the following statements on contraction of a skeletal muscle is false? The correct answer here is, a nerve impulse is transmitted from the brain to the muscle. Baliktad. Mali siya kasi dapat yung nerve impulse should be from the muscle to brain. From the muscle meaning yung sensory nerves natin, sila yung magdadala ng nerve impulse to the brain. And then yung brain siya yung mag interpret ng nerve impulse. Number 46. Which of the following is the best conclusion to the illustration shown above? So dito, pinapakita yung economic development. Yung arrow dito, it results to global warming, ozone depletion, and habitat destruction, which are all harmful to the environment. So the best answer here is letter A, industrialization has bad effects to the environment. Number 47, Which of the following outcomes of economic development projects have no environmental impact? So, for these questions, walang correct answer. Pero kapag change natin yung no to an, bali yung question is, which of the following outcomes of economic development projects have an environmental impact? Yung correct answer doon is letter C. One, two, and three. Except lang yung greenhouse effect. Kasi ang definition ng greenhouse effect, it is the process that occurs when gases in Earth's atmosphere traps the sun's heat. This process makes Earth much warmer than it would be without an atmosphere. So yun yung reason kung bakit we're not suffering from freezing cold dahil meron tayong greenhouse effect. Siya yung nagtatrap ng sun's heat. And then, dito naman, yung global warming naman, negative yung impact niya sa environment. Kasi yun yung gradual increase in Earth's temperature. Yan, because of increased levels of carbon dioxide, CFCs, and other pollutants sa ozone layer natin. So due to that, yun, natatrap yung heat sa loob ng Earth and then hindi na sila nakakalabas. Because of those pollutants sa atmosphere natin, hindi ganun nakakalabas yung heat. Therefore, mas umiinit ng umiinit yung Earth. And then, pag sinabi namang ozone depletion, yun yung gradual thinning of Earth's ozone layer in the upper atmosphere caused by the release of chemical compounds. So, due to gaseous chlorine yun or bromine from industry and other human activities. Yung ozone depletion, malaki yung effect niya sa mga polar regions kasi due to that, since mas numinipis yung ozone layer, mas hindi na po protektahan yung mga polar regions or yung buong Earth from the sun rays or from the heat na galing sa sun. So, ang nangyayari, natutunaw yung mga, po, yung mga ice sa polar regions. Yung wildlife habitat destruction naman, yun yung nasisira yung habitat ng animals and other organisms due to human activities such as farming, building construction, road construction, and so on. Number 48, the energy flow in a freshwater ecosystem is shown in the above diagram. Which group of organisms is represented by box Z? So, yung correct answer dito is letter B, decomposers. So, yung decomposers, yun yung organisms that eat dead animals and plants. And then, nila-recycle nila yung nutrients pa sa soil para magamit ulit ng producers. 
Um, usually, yung decomposers are the fungi, bacteria, and other invertebrate animals like worms, insects, and so on. At each step up the food chain, only 10% of the energy is passed on to the next level, while approximately 90% of the energy is lost as heat. So, trivia lang. 10% lang ng energy yung napapasa sa primary consumer and then sa secondary consumer and so on. So, balik kung nasa top ka ng energy pyramid, ikaw yung nakakakuha ng pinakaunting energy. Number 49, what can be concluded from the survivorship curve shown above? Ayan. So, yung correct answer dito is letter B, mortality rate is high for the young. So, dito sa type 3 survivors, konti lang yung nakaka-survive sa younger years nila. Pero once na nakapag-survive sila, sobrang haba nung life expectancy nila. Or yun. So, usually, yung mga species on this type of curve have lots of offspring at once. So, for example, yung tree, nakakapag-release siya ng thousands of seeds. And then, hindi niya na kailangan mag-provide ng gaanong care for the offspring. Magka- makakasurvive na lang yung tree. And then, sa type 2 curve naman, ito, usually, yan yung mga bird species. So, dito sa type 2, organisms die more or less equally at each age interval. Yan. Organisms with this type of survivorship curve may also have relatively few offspring. So, onti lang offspring nila and provide significant parental care. So, constant lang yung curve. And then, sa humans naman, sila yung nasa type 1 survivorship curve. Ayan, mostly humans and primates. Ayan, dito sa type 1 curve, organisms tend not to die when they are young or middle age. Pero, ayan, namamatay sila habang tumatanda. And species with type 1 curves usually have small numbers of offspring and provide lots of parental care to make sure those offspring survive. So, syempre, for example, yung sa humans, diba, yung baby nila kailangan alagaan nila para makapag-survive. So, kapag hindi nila inalagaan yung baby, ayun, mamamatay. Number 50. Which of the following fields of study best supports evidences from paleontology about evolutionary relationships among species? So, yung correct data is letter C, molecular biology. So, yung molecular biology kasi, ayun, broad siya, and it is the field of biology that studies the composition, structure, and interactions of cellular molecules such as nucleic acid and proteins that carry out the biological processes essential for the cell's function and maintenance. So yung paleontology pala, yun yung study ng no, uh, mga ancient life. So for example, yung mga prehistoric plants, dinosaurs, ayan, mammals, and even microbes. So bale, through molecular biology, napapag-aralan nila yung fossil evidences and nakikita nila yung relationship ng nucleic acid and proteins between organisms. And when you say ecological genetics, it is the study of genetics in natural field populations. It focuses on traits involved in interactions between and within species and between an organism and its environment, particularly those that determine fitness. So, yung keyword natin is yung between an organism and environment. And then dito, yung molecular genetics naman, it is a subfield of biology that addresses how differences in the structures or expression of DNA molecules manifest as variation among organisms. So, uh, particularly, ang inaaral dito ay yung expression ng DNA molecules. And yung sa population genetics naman, siya yung field that studies genetic composition of biological populations and the changes in genetic composition that result from the operation of various factors including natural selection. Thank you so much for watching! Please subscribe on this channel and like this video if this has helped you. Thank you!